Hey, Shalom, Makiam, Shalom. First off, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Akwar Kadash. I want to send double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. I want to send much peace, love, and salutations to you, Akiam, out there pushing the word and sincerity and your truth. This is the brother Ariala, and this is going to be a World War III algorithm update. I want to touch on a few things that have been going on this uh, weekend. Uh, things are moving a lot faster. Apostle Tahar. At the beginning of the year, he deemed this year prophecy. Prophecy, he called this year prophecy. And through the spirit and power of Yahweh, we've seen things move incredibly quickly, incredibly fast, man. I wanna to touch on some of the things that we've always been going over. As you can see, I have a video pulled up here. One of the uh, videos that we did, me and the brother Raquario Quam did, back in April the 13th of 2017 called Wars and Rumors of War, part two. In this series, on this one, <coughs> Salaki Akim, I'm still a bit under the weather. The Lord willing we get through this. In this video, we talk about, we go into a little bit of the least shall draw them out the state of Israel and some of the things that they were trying to do. And uh, one of the things we talk about is something called the Greater Israel Project, where the state of Israel and the West and its allies want to do whatever they can to secure these lands that were, you know, that are mentioned in the book of Genesis, the 15th chapter, these boundaries of, of, of what uh, the nation of Israel is supposed to rule. And Esau is artificially, by removing landmarks and borders, trying to circumvent and create a, a artificial blessing, the same blessing that Esau lost. They want that blessing back. And so these Edomites have conspired to take over these regions. And so right now what we see is, a, is, is battles in the land of Syria, okay? In the northern regions here, on the border of Turkey and in the southern regions here on the border of, of Jordan, Palestine, and the current state of Israel. All along the Euphrates here, you have wars going on, proxy armies and everything of, of that nature. This weekend has been a very hot weekend, man. I wanted to touch in on a few things, update brothers on what we got going on and what we see and Lord willing, this is edifying. As usual, Akiam, if y'all have anything to place in the comment boards, I'll try to check in periodically and go over it. With no further ado, let's get things started. So I highlight this, you know, we go through these algorithm videos. You can see this algorithm is almost, <coughs> is almost two hours long. So it's so much information. That's why I always refer back to these because putting, putting together these algos, sometimes takes weeks but um i wanted to play a clip from one of the algorithms that we did called the least shall draw them out and then head into some other videos news articles and scriptures to go in on the current events today all right nation uh the state of israel and its relationships in the middle east are drawing uh the least are drawing out all these uh, men for war, okay? And it's drawing Babylon into ultimate destruction, okay? So we're gonna stick to that. On Friday, May 3rd, 2013, Israel launched an airstrike on a Syrian- Remember these dates that we're giving? He's talking about 2013. This is something that's building up to what you see today. Wars take time. 
you know, okay, boy, don't just pop off, okay, you, you, you build up to it. On um, boy, followed by a second attack on Sunday, May 5th, which targeted the scientific studies and research center in Jamriah, near the Syrian capital of Damascus. The total number of deaths and injuries. We had news come out about Israeli airstrikes on Syrian targets in and around Damascus talking about uh, pro-Iranian uh, 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 back targets. This is nothing new. Since 2015, 16, and 17, Israel, is Israel, the state of Israel has been attacking sites in Syria. It's, in, it's important to note that those, it generally goes unreported. Why it's now such a big deal is because in this situation, the Israeli government has taken an opportunity to make to make themselves the victim and to basically try to uh, justify itself, you know, going into the Golan High regions even more, dominating that region, and basically expanding this greater Israel project with the U.S. backing. And there's a lot of reasons why the things are escalating faster right now. We want to talk about some of those things, okay? But we're going to go and give background information, lead back up to it. You know how I like to do? I'll continue to repeat myself. Let's go, champ. Injuries is still unclear at this point. Israeli officials were silent in regards to the strikes until Syria issued a public statement to the United Nations confirming the attacks, condemning them for an act of war, and asserting their right to retaliate. This is the second time this year that Israel has initiated unprovoked attacks on Syria. So what's really going on here? Why on earth would Israel do something like this? The first thing to be aware of is that these recent moves against Syria are actually indirect attacks on Iran. Syria and Iran are bound by a mutual defense. Boom, you see how he's he putting all the pieces together for you? The attacks on Syria are really attacks on Iran. Yep. Okay, it's all together. Defense treaty. And any large scale war that breaks out with either one will most likely draw on the other. Likewise, any moves made by Israel can and will be interpreted as a move by the United States. Because if Israel gets involved with a conflict with Iran, United States will join the fight. As in most of the major events that we're seeing unfolding right now, the real motives have nothing to do with the official justifications given by the government and the mainstream media. This has nothing to do with protecting the Syrian people. This much should be clear by the simple fact that NATO has backed these insurgents in spite of numerous atrocities and is covering for them now even when they use chemical weapons. Nor is this about Iran attempting to build a nuke. Both the Mossad and the CIA have... Right now what you hear about is Iran trying to build a nuke. All right, now you had, uh, what was it, I think it was in 2015, maybe maybe sometime in 2016, that Iran nuke deal get passed, which allowed uh, I, uh, Iran to proliferate low-grade uranium. Uh, uh, low-grade uranium that's nowhere even close to weapons grade. But the U.S. and the West are able to push the propaganda that... So when you go back and, you know, you brothers can go and watch this one if you want to. But right now, what we're seeing is at the beginning of the year, if you guys remember, uh, in 2017, all of a sudden, Trump started talking about Iran and how they wanted to attack Iran. And, and you know, Trump administration puts Iran on notice. So, so those talks and those things, though, that never stopped. So as they put all this other stuff in the media, they still going forward with, with all their plans. And now we're starting to see things move faster. Why? Because economically, things are shifting fast, man. The infrastructure that controls how we how trade happens is is changing. Okay. So I want to go in. Let's see, we played that. I'm gonna play this clip, Akyam. You know what? Let's get a couple of articles, man. Let's get a couple of articles just to update. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, I'm going to play this right here. Now, Israeli News Live, I, I mean, he he has good news just because he has good contacts. And so he has people that are in the Middle East. So usually he gets news so much faster than other people and is way more on point. But his position and everything can be extremely annoying. Because one minute they, they talk about the uh, state of Israel and he'll put them in the in the light of being on the, the side of evil, but then he'll say, you know, you know, all these nations are coming up against us. Like, which one is it, bro? 
you, you teamed up with the Vatican, you teamed up with all these wicked entities, but somehow your state of Israel is righteous. No, y'all the y'all the synagogue of Satan, man. But it's gonna come through with with the state of Israel being destroyed, which is uh what we're waiting on, man, because that's what the scriptures prescribe. Okay, so let's listen to this. <laughs> Welcome to Covering I'm Stephen Benin. You're watching Israeli News Live. Two things happening, breaking this morning. We already know about an Israeli plane being shot down. The Los Angeles Times is reporting that Israel's Netanyahu acknowledges that he is likely to be indicted soon. Well, we also have inside information that came out yesterday, not publicly, but it's come out yesterday. Sources that we're being told is that Prime Minister Netanyahu will resign on Monday and then to be... Now, why is and, and why he's choosing to go ahead and resign and everything like that is extremely interesting. I don't know what type of games they're trying to play or if he's really going to resign, but there's been rumblings of the people wanting him out for a minute now. Now, of course, we don't know what's really going on in the background, but uh, it's interesting that this is all happening right around his so-called resignation, which is supposed to happen Monday. You know? Now... Just followed up with a possible six months uh, jail time. Yeah, so that's right. pretty shocking what we're seeing, hearing about this. And uh, I know there was a lot of reluctance about reporting this, but with the Los Angeles Times already saying that uh, the prime minister acknowledges that he is likely to be indicted soon. And I have to tell you, friends, <clears throat> to me, it's a big witch hunt. But I think one of the main reasons why they're trying to indict him and get him out of office is Prime Minister Netanyahu has been a thorn in the side to a two state solution. And I saw a video that came out in 2012 about him. People were trying to use it against him, saying that uh, this is what his real intentions are. And they actually mistranslate what he says in the video. I was looking at that in the Hebrew language. He doesn't say that he can manipulate the Americans. He's saying that the Americans are for us. And that was what he was talking about. But the whole point was, was he's trying to hang on uh, to the land, using the military as the means to do so. Uh, but now the allegations, the indictment is too close to happening. And so our sources are telling us he is going to resign Monday. I don't know if it's actually going to happen or not. All I can say is it's a very high ranking official that is saying this. So we'll just have to wait to see how that plays out. But of course, as you're already aware of, RT reporting this as well, that we have Iran and Syria are playing with fire. Israeli military warns amid flare-up of tensions, and we have a, an Israeli warplane that was shot down. See, and you know what's crazy is that they talk about this Israeli warplane being shot down, but they don't tell you what happened. Now, apparently, Iran has some drones that were surveilling uh, and, and going around in the area. And will you guys, man, will you check this out, all right? So let me show you guys something. All right, so this is this is Syria. This state of, this is the what's called the Golan Heights region right here. All right, so the Golan Heights region is split between Syrian occupation, which of course has Iranian-backed troops, and then on the other side you have Israeli occupation that they took over back in the Six Day War. Okay, in 1967. Okay, now. Syria, here you see Damascus, up here is uh, 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 Palestine, the state of Israel. Here's the Golden Heights region. Now, what the state of Israel said is that one of the Iranian drones came into their territory and they shot it, shot it down. Well, not only did they shoot down the Iranian drone, the damn uh, Israeli warplane just started going all up in Syria bombing shit, man. Just hitting all types of targets, going crazy, man. So, Syria's like, man, come on, bro. <laughs> they shot, they shot, they shot the warplane down, man. Which, which is also, which hasn't happened since 1982. And it shows you the might of these smaller nations now. Now they have the the missile technology to battle back against the Israeli Air Force. Okay. They have they have the capabilities to fight back, okay. 
Let's let's keep playing this. I want to see what he says. Over, uh, uh, right over there near near the border there, but this was over. It says the IDF warned Syria and Iran against violating Israeli sovereignty. Otherwise, they would pay a heavy price. The Israeli military uh, also insisted that Israel does not seek an escalation in the tensions. And from what we understand this happened thus far, Israel was targeting an Iranian target inside of Syria when they came under a fire from the Syrian government. The Syrian government did hit the plane. The pilots were uh, they, they both survived. The plane did crash and uh, says here that, uh, uh, let's see, the IDF lashed out at the Syrian military, accusing the state of interference in the Israeli-Iranian incident, as well as, uh, as at Iran for using Syria as a launch pad for activities against Israel. Now, the source that we have that said about Netanyahu resigning on Monday was also saying even before this happened, that there was fixing to be a major escalation of tensions there in the in Syria, in that region of the world there. And we've been looking, we've been waiting for this for some time. Uh, you know, it even goes back, reminds me of that young man that uh, the, the, the Jewish boy had the near-death experience there that said that this would be the flashpoint even that would ignite between Russia and the United States. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, he was talking about it being Obama that created that problem. But the thing is, Obama's not even left the scene. Obama is still active on the scene. In fact, it seems to me a lot of times that Obama is the spokesman for the deep state to begin with. Why and these people are absolutely delusional, man. You see this bullshit that this dude is talking, man? Just absolute delusion. Just delusional. Nothing. Our Prime Minister, um, excuse me, President Trump and Putin could probably resolve their differences, but that deep state will not let things die down there. <laughs> yeah. So now, so man, come on, bro. These dudes, man. <laughs> they blaming. They somehow still blaming Obama, bringing Obama back up. Man. Come on, bro. This is coordinated, man. This is all coordinated and contrived, man, because they want to take over these regions. <coughs> All right. They need these regions in order to control natural resources, in order to control the whole uh, uh, in, to control the world. OK. So I want to play this right here. Check this out. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says his country will not allow Iran to establish a military presence in Syria. This after an Israeli jet was shot down by Syrian forces on its way home from a bombing mission. It was one of a group of planes targeting Iran-backed positions inside Syria. So they went inside Syria and was just it was bombing different sites inside of Syria. Syria goes, what the hell, bruh? And shoots down the plane. So now the state of Israel is 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 playing victim to justify more conflict, okay? So we're gonna see if this is gonna escalate further, but now you got bigger players. Like we said, the same Afghanistan, the same Iraq with a with minimal you know, military opposition, no. Syria, Iran, Russia, these nations are, are way more built up now. They have anti-missile uh, defense systems. They have anti-aircraft. -air Defense systems. If the war, regional war breaks out between these larger nations, it can escalate into a World War III instantaneously. Okay? And this is what we're looking at. This is what we're looking for, baby. Okay? Israel says it was provoked, a charge denied by Syria and Iran. A burning Israeli F 16, shot down by the Syrian Air Force. Both pilots ejected. One was seriously wounded. Israel says the jet attacked Iranian targets in Syria after an Iranian drone entered Israeli airspace. Yeah, man. And I was listening to one guy. He was making a point where it talks about uh, Iranian dr drone in Israeli airspace. But the Iranian drone never shot at anything, never, never attempted to, to do anything, allegedly. So how did that justify you going all the way up into Syria bombing stuff? It doesn't. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu insists Israel seeks peace, but will defend itself against any attack or attempt by Iran to establish itself in Syria. 
Iran seeks to use uh, Syrian territory to attack Israel for its professed goal of destroying Israel. This morning, Iran brazenly violated Israel's sovereignty. Israel holds Iran and its Syrian host responsible for today's aggression. We will continue to do whatever is necessary to protect our sovereignty and our security. Allies of Syria and enemies of Israel celebrated the downing of the war plane. Fighters from the pro-Iranian Hezbollah group gathered on the border between Lebanon and Israel as Israeli soldiers looked on. The Iranian president Hassan Rouhani condemned the Israeli action in Syria. If one country thinks it can get desirable results by boosting terrorism or bombarding neighboring countries, then it is making a mistake. We are ready to defend the security of the region, and we call on all other countries to cooperate in this. Boom. So now these nations are being gathered, man, and Iran is one is 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 a is a key is a key nation, man. Okay. So when you read, we read here in, in 2 Ezra chapter 15, verse 28, Behold, in horrible vision and appearance thereof from the east, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, and a multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth, that all, that all they which hear them may fear and tremble. Also the Carmanians raging in wrath shall go forth as, as the wild boars of the wood, and with great power shall they come and join battle with them and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. And, and then shall the dragons have the upper hand, remembering their nature. And if they shall turn themselves conspiring together in great power to persecute them. OK, and that's, that's what we're seeing. man. we see in these uh, these formerly small weaker nations create their own create they have their own armaments now and the most high's putting the spirit into them to go into battle man 2018 prophecy prophecy man so we see we it's going down baby okay the loss of the jet comes as israel acknowledged for the first time an attack on iranian targets in syria Earlier, I spoke with DW's middle. All right, so and this has been going on for a while, where where Israeli uh, Israelis have been attacking so-called Iranian back targets. Okay, but now they pushing it to the forefront of the news, and which lets us know they're getting ready to do something. Okay, uh, let's see. This is an article from the DailyStar.co. It says, Iran threatens to open gates of hell and attack U.S. bases after Israeli jet shot down. Iran's military commander has warned that his country will open the gates of hell over Israel after the country retaliated to one of its fighter jets being shot down by Syrian forces. The comments were made by Lieutenant Commander of the country's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, uh, Brigadier General Hossein Salami. He also threatened the United States, saying that his country had the military power to destroy all American bases in the region. Okay, taunting the U.S., he said that he said they would uh, be better to leave the region before its defeat. And it talks about earlier today an Israeli F-16 fighter. Jet was shot down after coming under fire from Syrian forces. A spokesman from Iran's Supreme National Security Council said Syria's response was a clear warning to Israel. The era of Israeli strikes on Syria is over. Because, it is, like I said, the state of Israel has been doing strikes on Syria. This is the first time you've seen Syria re retaliate. Like, actually retaliate. So it's just like, hmm, right? It says here, he also vowed that his country will respond strongly to all further aggression from Israel. One of the pilots from the downed fighter jet is in serious condition in the hospital. In response, Israel launched 12 attacks on Syria and Iranian targets in Syria. General Salami denied that an Iranian drone shot down by the Israelis 
was violating Israel's airspace, saying the drone was gathering intelligence on Islamic State. Okay. Uh, oh, no, nah, we ain't gonna go there. We ain't gonna go there. Let's go. No, I'm gonna play this video right here. All right, so I'm gonna play this video right here, and basically. When you uh, when you look it up, man, you'll see that the uh, the state of Israel and the United States they need these regions in order to ex to hold positions in the global economy that's rapidly changing. One of the things that we see that just got announced was China has just announced that it's going to start putting oil futures down on their petrol yuan meaning they'll be able to open up their markets and saying, okay, who uh, we're going to buy oil and we're going to buy oil using this currency. Who wants to be down? Okay, so I'm going to read this a little bit. This right here is on Bloomberg. How China is about to shake up the oil futures market. This was written yesterday, February 9th, by Song Wu Park. It says, China, the world's biggest oil buyer, is opening a domestic market to trade futures contracts. It's been planning one for years, only to encounter delays. The Shanghai International Energy Exchange, a unit of Shanghai Futures Exchange, will be known by the acronym INE and will allow Chinese buyers to lock in oil prices and pay in local currency. Okay, so futures contracts allow you to pay basically a down payment, you pay a small down payment. In order to lock in a, a, a future supply of a certain commodity or a good, okay? It says, also, foreign traders will be allowed to invest a first for, Chinese, for China's commodities markets because the exchange is registered in Shanghai's free trade zone. There are implications for the U.S. dollar's well-established role as the global currency of the oil market. When will trading begin? From, from March 26th, multiple rounds of testing have been carried out and all listing requirements met. The push for oil futures gained impetus in 2017 when China surpassed the US as the world's biggest crude importer. The Asian nation's purchases reached a record high last month. And then it shows you here, how Chinese imports in the black have gone past United States imports. All right. So number two says, why is this important for China? Futures trading would wrest some control over pricing from the main international benchmarks, which are based in dollars. Denominating oil contracts in Yuan would promote the use of China's currency in global trade one of the country's key long-term goals. And China will benefit from having a benchmark that reflects the grades of oil that are mostly consumed by local refineries and differ from those underpinning Western contracts, okay? How do oil futures work? Futures contracts fix prices today for delivery, for delivery in a later date. Consumers use them to protect against higher prices down the line. Speculators use them to bet on where prices are headed. In 2017, all futures contracts in New York and London outstripped physical trading by a factor of 23. Crude oil is amongst the most actively traded commodities with two key benchmarks, West Texas Intermediate which trades on the New York Mercantile Exchange, and Brent Crude, which trades on ICE Futures Europe and London. Why didn't China begin trading futures until now? It says lower crude prices have played a part. Chinese oil futures were proposed in 2012 following spikes above $100 a barrel. All right, but prices in 2017 have averaged a little more than $50. There is also concern over volatility. 
China introduced domestic crude futures in, in 1993, only to stop a year later because of volatility. And we've seen that happen when they proposed this type of stuff, the, the prices were artificially held down so they could keep China out the market because they wouldn't be competitive, all right? Why would we go to China when we, we got plenty of cheap oil right here and it's already established, right? Uh, let's see, let me see. I'm gonna go to the, the number seven, it says, what do you want challenge the dollar's dominance in oil? It says not anytime soon, since paying for oil and dollars is an entrenched practice, like everybody is doing it, according to some analysis. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the point on that. I want to go back and show y'all more about why these regions that are being fought over, these Golden Height regions, why all this propaganda that's happening, oil contracts, energy contracts, why all that stuff is going down. Hold on just one second, I can't. Oh, you got it. All right, yeah. Why all this stuff is so important? Let me play this. All right, listen to this, I can't. To the significance of what I found here, we need to provide some background information for context. And we're going to start back in 2009 when Qatar proposed a pipeline plan to Assad in order to send its natural gas into Europe through Saudi Arabia, Syria, and boom. So yeah, this was that Qatar-Turkey pipeline deal, right? You see, because Qatar's economy is extremely controlled by the West. All right, so they was going to run that all the way through Saudi Arabia, all right, up through Syria. That's why you have all these wars going on in northern Syria. Damascus is right about here, you know? But they needed the Assad regime out in order to accomplish this, okay? All the way up into Europe. And Jordan. Now, Assad refused this offer in order to, quote, protect the interest of its Russian ally, which is Europe's top supplier of natural gas. <laughs> so Assad essentially just said thanks, but no thanks. And then one year later, Assad began negotiations for another pipeline plan, only this one is going to carry Iranian gas to Europe across Iraq and Syria. And of course, if this were to be built, Europe's dependence on Russia is going to continue, and that is in Assad's best interest. Now here, many journalists have correctly pointed out that the U.S.-backed Qatar-Turkey pipeline into Europe is in direct competition with, and in fact in direct conflict with the Russian-backed Iranian-Syrian pipeline into Europe. And this has led many to speculate that these, this current proxy war in Syria right now has everything to do with maintaining the flow of gas and energy into Europe through these particular pipelines. But what I have discovered here paints a bit of a different picture, <laughs> because according to my research, the X that marks the spot, so to speak, is not here, but it is in fact down here as Golan Heights. This is on Syria's land, but two-thirds of it is occupied by Israeli forces, and here's where it gets interesting. In 2013, a company called Genie Oil & Gas was granted exclusive oil and gas exploration rights to this 153 square mile radius here in the southern part of the Golan Heights. And this was granted to them by none other than the Netanyahu government. And as it turns out, in 2015, it was discovered that this Israeli occupied Golan Heights in Syria has more oil and gas than Saudi Arabia does. Guys, this is huge because you can now officially add Israel into the mix when it comes to potentially sparking World War III, all because of oil in Syria. Now, it has yet to be put into production, but odds are that that soon will be the case, because just look at who I discovered is on the strategic advisory board of Genie Oil and Gas. You've got All right, so we were talking about this in class. We were reading an article that was going over uh, uh, Genie Oil and Gas. And when you look at the people who run this company out of uh, it was, it's Newark, New Jersey, bro, 
it's all the these uh, Illuminati, basically all these top banking families that run everything over here. Um, I'm going to play this and we'll see if he kind of goes over it. Names like Dick Cheney, Rupert Murdoch, Jacob Rothschild, and James Wolseley, just to name a few. This isn't your average oil company here, folks. <laughs> these guys want to spark World War III, so let's get to the bottom here of just who they are and why they have such heavy hitters here, politically speaking, on their advisory board. So let's start with the founder of Genie Energy, the chief executive officer and the chairman of the board, Howard Jonas. As you can see here from his bio, he's obviously no stranger to the oil and gas industry, having been involved as far back as 2006. And it's estimated that Jonas is sitting on top of reserves in excess of 10 billion barrels of oil in the United States and 40 billion barrels in Israel. So when you add that up, it's quite significant when compared to the likes of Saudi Arabia. Now let's go through who Howard Jonas strategically picked here to be on his advisory board. First, we have Michael Steinhardt. According to Forbes magazine, he is the pioneer of modern hedge funds. I mean, just look at him, bro. He looks like a sick motherfucker. Look at him. You, you trust him? And his net worth right now, as of March 2017, is in excess of $1 billion. He's also the founder of Birthright Israel, which, as we see here, is an educational organization that sponsors free 10-day heritage trips to Israel for young adults and of Jewish heritage. And that's quite the interesting symbol he's got yeah, going on over there, but perhaps that's for another video altogether. Yeah. Next up, we have Richard, a.k.a. Dick Cheney, CEO of Halliburton Company and U.S. Secretary of Defense from 1989. See, the Halliburton Company will do all the infrastructure for building uh, all the pipelines and making everything go. You need Dick Cheney and his company to be up in there. That's why Dick Cheney was key and integral in basically the rebuilding plans of Iraq and Afghanistan. Into 1993. Now, Halliburton, of course, is one of the world's largest oil field services, uh, servicing companies. They have operations already in 80 countries around the world. Wow. And the controversies surrounding Halliburton, as you can see here, are as grand in scope as their global reach has become. But that didn't stop Jonas from putting Cheney on his advisory board over here at Genie Oil and Gas. Next up, we've got Mary Landrieu. She served as the chair of the Senate Committee for Energy and Natural Resources. And according to her bio here at Genie Oil and Gas, it was her who sponsored and passed the U.S.-Israel Energy Cooperation Bill. So it's no brainer here why she's on the board, folks. It's all about political sway and influence in order to guarantee at least a backdoor into Syria. Next up, we have Rupert Murdoch, founder and executive chairman of News Corporation, one of the world's largest diversified media companies. News Corporation's holdings include Fox Entertainment, Dow Jones & Company, The New York Post, HarperCollins, and significant media assets on six continents hmm i wonder why they would want to have him involved could it be that it has anything to do with utilizing the media to once again sway the opinions of the masses to be in favor of a syrian invasion blaming assad for chemical attacks on his own people was just the beginning of the propaganda here folks and i think it's about to get a lot worse Next up, we have Bill Richardson. He's the former U.S. Secretary of Energy under the Clinton administration. He's another major player here in the energy sector, not to mention a former Bohemian Grove attendee who was sweating bullets when he was questioned about it here by Luke Radowski and our good friends over at We Are Change. I'll include links to this and to everything else contained in this video in the description below. Now, moving on, we have none other, uh, none other than Jacob Rothschild. Yes, this is the Jacob Rothschild of the Rothschild banking dynasty. But his interests are not just in fiat currency. It turns out he's a bit of an oil tycoon himself. And in 2003, Rothschild came under scrutiny when Russian oil indus uh, indus um, industrialist Mikhail 
Kordonovsky's shares in Yukos passed to him under a deal that they concluded prior to Chordonovsky's arrest. So shady dealings, to say the least, already when it comes to Rothschild and big oil. A perfectly suitable candidate for Howard Jonas's advisory board here at Genie Gas and Oil. Next on the list is Dr. Lawrence Summers. He served as the 71st Secretary of the Treasury under President Clinton, and he just so happens to be a member of the Bilderberg Group, this very secretive and very nefarious organization who we've covered extensively here at Press for Truth. Again, I'll leave links in the description if you want to learn more about that. And last but certainly not least, we have James Wolseley. He is the former director of the CIA, and he's the co-founder of the United States Energy Security Council. Folks, this man is currently going around. He, he's all over the news right now, screaming. Man, these people look demonic. Man, look at this. Look at this dude, bro. This man is currently going. These are the leaders of the planet, man. These these blood drinking vampires, man. Get to tell you and your family and everybody you love and everybody else on the planet Earth what's right and what's wrong. These people. Look at this dude, man. He probably just did a line of cocaine before he did that meeting. Around, he, he's all over the news right now screaming that we need to, quote, strike Iran's nuclear operations as part of any military effort against Syrian President Bashir al-Assad. So... Again, a perfect contender here for Genie Oil and Gas, a company who is fully prepared to do whatever it's going to take to secure these reserves and to work with the United States and Israel, not Russia and Syria, when it comes to exporting these goods to Europe and beyond. So, folks, please help me expose this plan. Bro, so if they can come into this area, take it over. Take a, a, a side out in, in 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 at the same time, bro. They'll 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 be able to completely control how energy is moved back and forth all across the world, man. It'd be a whole nother economic, you know, takeover. Okay, and and this right here is 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 fuel, man. It's fuel. All right. So what what is that? Um. Uh, See, Micah two and one. Two and one. Boom. Yeah, Micah chapter two, verse one. It says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. And they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. And that's what they do, man. They go up into these different lands, man. They create all these uh, false flag wars. All right. Create all this dissension between the people. Creating these civil wars right now. Syria on the northern end and on the southern end is in complete disarray, man. President Bashir al-Assad, is a, he, he, he's, he's got perils on every side. So these small nations are being forced to say, you know what, man? It's time to let's go. It's time to go ahead and lock up. You bring what you got to the table, we're going to bring what we got to the table. All right? That's why it says this, Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 14. It says, thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in thine inheritance which thou shalt inherit in the land that the Lord thy power give thee to possess it, man. So you got these fake Jews moving borders, changing names, moving people all around about, man. And it's just going to end in destruction. It's not going to be any harmony from the state of Israel ruling. It's going to be nothing but chaos and destruction. Okay? It's going to be nothing but chaos and destruction, man. Brother GMS Army of 144, Job 20, uh, 26 and 16. Though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare raiment as the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on. 
and the innocent and the innocent shall divide the silver. Okay, and that's what we're waiting on. We're waiting on on all of these moves that's being made to to escalate, and we're finally starting to see big dog moves. Okay, we're starting to see these players make large moves, man. To to, to where we got uh, major nuclear powers getting ready to go head up. This is not like we said. This ain't uh, Afghanistan, uh, Iraq. No, these are major players with with significant military might going up against each other openly, more openly now, man. Okay. Uh, let's see. Class, what we always love to read, man. Jeremiah fifty and forty five. Therefore, hear ye the counsel of the Lord, and He hath taken against Babylon and his purposes, that He had purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. You know, all these people like to call the deep state or the, the, the cabal, you know, they, they, the, these are the modern day uh, uh, Chaldeans, man. All right. The modern Chaldeans, man. It says, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. At the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved and the cry is heard among the nations. All right. And so we're going to see this. In World War Three, man, we're going to see this when these missiles start to really get shot around the place. And we've never seen Syria stand up against the state of Israel like this. Look, type in Israel. Attacks. Syria. One hour ago. So let's, let's talk about everything's from today. Let me see. Let me see. See, man, usually when the state of uh, Israel attacks Damascus, they don't ever be talking about it. Look, this is November uh, 30th, 2016. Israeli airstrike hit Damascus outskirts, Syrian reports say. Uh, watch this. 2015. Iran confirms Israeli airstrikes on southern Syria and killed one. That's back uh, January 19, 2015. March 19, 2014, Israeli airstrikes in Golan kill Syrian soldier. See that? Here's another one, November 11, 2015, Israeli Air Force strikes Damascus Airport in Syria. Uh, March 17, 2017, Israeli jet strike outside Syria. See, we've always seen the state of Israel attack Syria, but now, but you don't really, I mean, it'll be a blip in the news, but now this particular airstrike, man, it's everywhere, man. Seven hours ago, two hours ago, 10 hours ago, six hours ago. They're time, man. And they're really hinging on the fact that this Israeli air, uh, air uh, plane got shot out the sky. That usually, that they, they never get any type of strike back. But this time, the, the Syrian regime was like, you know what? F this, man. Shoot this nigga out the sky, bro. They doing too much. Because they have the weaponry and they have the backing from these other nations to fight back against the Israeli Air Force. See, since the 60s, the Israeli military has been able to just indiscriminately bomb wherever they want to bomb in that region, man. Whether it was Egypt, Palestine, Syria. But now these nations have beat their plowshares and their pruning hooks into swords and spears. They ready to they ready to fight, okay. So it, man, look, it's going down, baby. It's getting extremely juicy. We haven't seen this type of news in some time now, okay. But now that's why the Apostle Tahar, through the Spirit, deemed this year prophecy, prophecy, okay. Uh, was there anything else that I wanted to read? Mm. What does it say? Uh, I want to read this real quick. Hezbollah said, 
downing of Israeli F-16, the start of a new strategic era. Lebanese terror uh, group praises vigilance of Syrian army, says crash jet marks decisive end to old arrangements. It says Hezbollah held serious air defenses after they reportedly downed an Israeli fighter jet on Saturday, saying it marked the start of a new strategic era. This is the beginning of a new strategic era, which puts an end to the violation of Syrian airspace and territory. The Lesbanese, Lebanese terror group, <laughs> terror group said in a statement published by a Lebanon's a and news agency, Hezbollah, an Iranian proxy, you can tell uh, this is the Times of Israel, by the way. See how you can tell, her, you, you know which side you're reading from. But nonetheless, we're going to keep reading. It says Hezbollah, an Iranian proxy uh, uh, backing Syrian President Bashar al-Assad in his country's civil war, praised the vigil vigilance of the Syrian army and said it had bravely blocked Israeli warplanes and downed the F-16. It also said the Syrian response marked a decisive end to old arrangement. Hezbollah supporters were celebrating the incident on Saturday across from the Israeli city of Matula, According to Israeli TV reports, the statement from Hezbollah came after its allies, Iran and Syria, denied that an unmanned drone Israel said is shot down violated the Jewish state's airspace, calling Israeli allegation lies, allegations lies, and saying the drone was on a regular mission gathering intelligence on Islamic State. The drone incident led to a barrage of Israeli airstrikes on Iranian and Syrian targets in Syria. Syria responded with heavy anti-aircraft fire that set off multiple warning sirens in Israel and managed to down the Israeli F-16 in Israeli territory, seriously wounding a pilot. Like I said, these are real militaries now. You can't just fly around and do all that BS, man. They got they got anti-aircraft missiles that'll take that'll take you know, these fighters out, they, it's going down. It says, according to the Israeli military, the confrontation began with the drone entering Israeli airspace before being intercepted by a combat helicopter over the city of Bain Shaim, Bet Shaim, near the Jordanian border. Okay. It says the military called the infiltration a severe and irregular violation of Israeli sovereignty and said Iran would be held responsible for its outcome, <laughs> marking a dramatic escalation in tensions along Israel's northern border. The IDF released video footage, video footage earlier Saturday afternoon of the drone's destruction over Israel's territory, as well as the subsequent IDF strike on, on its Iranian command vehicle in Syria. Okay, let's see if this will play. It's like a damn video game, man. And they got it locked in and they destroyed it. It says Israel said it later targeted at least 12 other sites, including three aerial defense batteries and four Iranian targets that are a part of Iran's military establishment in Syria. So from that point forward, we see the state of Israel just say, yeah, man, that flew into our airspace. We're just going to go into Syria and just start bombing the hell out of things, man. But you see how they flipping it in the, in, in the media, making it seem like Iran was the aggressor, Syria is the problem. We need to stop these uh, organizations and groups. They're attacking our freedom. You know, just absolute madness, man. Let's see anything in here that we ain't brought out. Talk about how they're gonna bring hell. All right, a Syrian military official said that his country would continue to respond in in kind to all attacks on its soil. Our defense systems hit a number of missiles as well uh, as an as an Israeli aircraft that had been carrying out attacks south of Damascus capital to its west and on the outskirts of homes, the Syrian officials uh, told Lebanese El Nash Nashara 
news outlet. He added that the damage sustained from the Israeli aircraft fire was limited to property, but acknowledged that a number of soldiers had been injured as well. The, Hezbo the Hezbollah affiliated Al Mayadeen TV station claimed that the Syrian military had managed to intercept 70% of the dozens of missiles fired by Israeli warplanes. So Israel warplanes came in, was shooting at all these targets, but the Syrian, the, the anti-missile de uh, defense systems that Syria has that was given to it by Russia and by Iran was able to stop most of the Israeli onslaught, which is significant. That is significant because back in the day, they wouldn't have been able to do that. If, if uh, the state of Israel wanted to run through there and destroy everything that it could, they would be able to because the state of uh, Syria wouldn't have any defense. But now they have much more sophisticated military weaponry because of their uh, uh, allegiance with Russia and Iran. Okay. So, so you see that Russia is a defense to these nations now, man. They can stand up, okay? It says, the confrontation was the most serious between Israel and Iran since the start of the civil war in Syria in 2011. Uh, I don't care about that. Uh. You brothers can go and, you know, if you guys want to read this, it's on the Times of Israel. You see right here, Hezbollah, downing of Israeli F-17, started a new strategic war, okay? So now we're seeing these larger nations come into conflict, and now we're starting to see World War III, which was a light at the very back end of a tunnel, start to become a clear picture in front of our faces for those who are watching, Okay. Uh, the brother GMS 144 spiritual food put Joel 3 and 12. Let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Okay, and that's what we see, man. We see these things coming together <coughs> for the manifestation of the Most High's will on the planet Earth, man. This is a big deal, man. These were not small moves that have been made. With the what's going on in the current economy, with how the U.S. just was able to take a trillion dollars out of the economy over the uh, the last few days, like it wasn't nothing, and then right at the after they took a trillion dollars out of the economy, you saw the stock market have all this volatility. <laughs> then magically, Trump announces that it's got a new military spending budget. Where do you think they got that money from? They took it out of the equities market and they finna get ready to do something with that money, man. Not only that, you see China announced that they're gonna start their oil futures contracts, which is gonna be in direct opposition to the petrodollar, man. That starts next month. So with these different currency and trade wars, you have to have these nations put themselves in a position to basically come out on top at the end of the day. Can you do that later, baby? All right. You know, it, it, and, so, and so we're seeing these things escalate, not out of some type of noble reasons. We, you know, we got to protect ourselves. No, this is all for control. This is all to, to control who is going to control these new economic systems that are about to be rolled out, man. All right. And like we always say, man, rulership and authority it has been compartmentalized in this kingdom, man. You have certain aspects of government and society controlled by the central bank and all this. And then you have other aspects of society controlled by different committees and, and everything like that, man. So there's a lot of infighting, man. Like we like to read how the, the, the kingdom was partly weak and partly strong. How was that iron mixed with miry clay? That political uh, 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 back and forth that's always going on between the EU bloc nations, European Union, between the NATO allies, okay? That, those tensions is what's going to lead to these nations 
coming against each other and just fighting, man. All right. I'll read a couple more, man. Um, GMS uh, Goodly Heritage, Isaiah 13, 4, the noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, the Lord of hosts mustereth the hosts of the battle. So every, everything is being put together, man. We're seeing the way much, much bigger moves being played. Much bigger moves being played, man. We haven't seen these type of moves be played, okay? In the last 10 years, we haven't seen these type of big moves being made. So this lets us know, man, that 2018, definitely prophecy, baby. Prophecy. This should be getting you, Aki, I'm excited. This is juicy. This ain't no regular news. This ain't, oh, you know, like we was talking about. You know, there's a, there's a protest going on. No. This is real shit right here. And just like we said, war takes time, man. Piece by piece by piece, things are getting put together to culminate in the uh, Third World's War, man. So this is beautiful what we're watching. This is absolutely gorgeous what we're watching, man. Uh, is there anything else that I want to go in on? No, that, I mean, I just want to kind of touch in on that, man. We're going to see what's going to happen over the course of the uh, next couple of days. I want to see the uh, the U.S. response to say uh, if they're going to back them up. If if Syria continues, if Syria continues to do, uh, I'm sorry, Syria. If Israel continues to do what they do, and Syria decides to keep attacking the Israeli warplanes, we're going to see this thing escalate faster than we all could have believed. Okay, so this is interesting. Lord willing, uh, it keeps going down, man. But we have a lot of things happening economically. Uh, we have a lot of things happening on the uh, on the military front, man. And, you know, I think that's still everything about North Korea. That's just propaganda to get you distracted from really what's going on. They want war with Iran. They want war with Iran, man. They, 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 they need to have a justifier. And Iran is, is allies with all these groups that's up here in Syria, man. Okay? So we're we going to see, man. We're going to see. Yeah, the brother says, so war is Im imminent. Is that a question? I is that a question? It's like, is that a serious question? Of course war is imminent, man. You know? Look at what the fuck is going on. The, it, it's going down, man. That's why we're out here preaching. Because war is imminent. All these things are imminent. The rise of the nation of Israel is imminent. And the more we go out there and, and preach this word, the more we go out there and push, it's going to bring it more and more to the forefront. Okay, when you see these nations shooting each other's airplane, uh, uh, airplanes out the air and bombing each other, and, bro, uh, uh, Syria is nothing but a war zone, man. Look at Syria, bro. It's shredded. And uh, in, in Syria, man, this this is a, a biblical a biblical place, man. I wanna see, I wanna see a good let's see if they got a good one there. Good map of Syria, bro. Look at this place, man. Yeah, man. So this is the Euphrates River right here running through Syria, right? Damascus and all this is in red is what Bashir al-Assad so-called controls. This area right here in the yellow, the, the, all this region right here is where Turkey and the Kurdish forces are fighting right now. We ain't even brought that up yet. <coughs> okay. Now. You got this whole area fighting going on. Aleppo, they trying to get ISIL and ISIS up out of there. Down in the south, you got right here, this is that Golan Heights region where they want to control that. Well, they want to expand that, man. They really want to, 
all from here all the way all the way going further west they want to control this whole region okay so this whole area is just one big powder keg war zone man and there's too many major forces in this area you got the united states russia turkey great britain uh 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 uh, uh syria iran Hezbollah, Hezbollah and the uh, Palestinians, the state of Israel, okay? I, and, uh, you know, we got these uh, these Kurdish forces, proxy, proxy armies up in there. Bro, it's lit. It's absolutely lit, okay? So, so this thing is going down, baby. This thing is going down. All right. So, you know, with that, man, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, Bashim, Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you, Aki. I'm out there, man. Look, bro, it's going down, man. It is going down, bro. This is this this is a uh, these are bigger pieces being played that we see right here. Okay. So, Lord willing, man, no brothers on top of it, man. Everybody stay on top of it. We're willing to continue to do these algo updates. I always try to reference back to the other ones so brothers can kind of keep up with it and keep the uh, the pieces together, man. But, man, uh, this morning, man, I've been sick, bro. I woke up and saw this news. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. You know, so, hey, man, Lord willing, man, it just keeps going on and on and on, bro. But. Go to to force Yahweh Shah to come back and save us out of this place, man. Hey, man. Lord willing, man. Uh, things will get better. Yeah, man. I'm still under the weather, man. <laughs> you know. I'm trying to get some rest, and uh, yeah, brothers, pray for me. I pray for y'all. I can, man. And uh, we'll see. Hey, Shalom.